This business on Mersey Island has been growing and harvesting oysters for five generations. To keep them healthy and are safe, oysters need clean, pollution-free water. Though a sewage spill has never affected this business directly, the owner has joined a legal action against the government, fearing it's only a matter of time. If you're pumping sewage into the sea, those oysters will take it, contaminate them, shut us down or even make someone really ill and uh, God forbid that could ever happen. So it's just something that 300 years of us growing oysters as a family that we've been doing it for, sewage could stop that legacy in an instant. Since 2020, England's water firms pumped sewage into our rivers and seas for more than 7 million hours. The latest data shows not much has changed. England's 10 water and sewage companies monitored just over 300,000 sewage spill events in 2022. This is down around 19% on 2021, but is largely due to below average rainfall rather than interventions made by the industry. The highest number of spills were recorded by United Utilities, which serves the northwest of the country. It monitored almost 70,000 sewage spills last year. Essentially, what those figures mean is there's sewage going to our rivers pretty much all the time. This discharge in Essex has been going on for about the last 40 hours. I can, I can smell the sewage running into this stream. In response to these latest figures, Water UK, which represents water companies, said it was bringing forward 56 billion of investment to help bring about the transformation that we all want to see. The thing is, that transformation isn't going to happen very quickly. The government doesn't require water companies to improve storm overflows into bathing water sites until 2035 and remaining overflows until 2050. Tom Howard is hoping a case coming before the High Court later this year, brought by him and two campaign groups, will force the government to do more. The government just needs to have some guts and say, look, this isn't good enough, and, and they need to be forced to have some teeth and stand up to water companies and say we need to do more and admit they need to do more. Howard's great-great-grandfather was running this business when the Victorians built most of our sewers. They factored in some population growth but not subsequent decades of underinvestment by water firms. Now the pressure is on to make good on their inheritance. Tom Clark, Sky News, Essex.